Welcome, Tales of a Flipside family, to another episode of Comic Talk. Sorry if you hear any background noise. We're actually holding an event today. We have a commander. It's actually Thursday. Uh, we couldn't uh, film because I was picking up a collection on Monday. So uh, here we are on Thursday, uh, and we're talking about events. What kind of events you can hold to bring traffic into your store and maybe make a lifetime customer out of that? People that came to see your event. So everybody that uh, you know has a comic book store knows about the two comic events every year. You have Free Comic Book Day, and then you have Comic Fest. You also have um, Local Comic Shop Day, but not everybody is involved in that, and it's kind of not very big. It's not very advertised, so usually comes out on on a small business um, Saturday uh, during the holidays. Make your Free Comic Book Day a big event. Right, people are going to be coming for the free comics, uh, but like, try to put something together that you have something more than that going on. We're lucky that we're in New York. We have a lot of people who have been in movies that live nearby, so you know, getting television stars and movie stars is not tremendously difficult. We've also had, uh, luckily enough, to have the Clerks guys here um, for a signing. We actually, I think, did that on uh, Free Comic Book Day, and we also did it on. Uh, somewhere in the middle of the summer where we got a lot of people through the door. I know if you're like in Iowa or uh, you know somewhere in the Midwest like Kansas, you might not be able to get somebody to come in. But you might, not, you might have a local celebrity, somebody who's written a book, uh, a comic book author, uh, a comic book uh, artist, because now they're starting to move all over the country because everything's able to be done digitally. So, <clears throat> Make sure that you're doing something, you know, big. Maybe, you know, hire a couple of people to wear costumes. If you have a local cosplayers, you can get in touch with those. Yeah. You know, create a lot of excitement. Uh, it generates a lot more people through your door. It's one of our biggest days. We do a big sale. We make a lot of money that day, but we also have generated customers from that. Comic Fest, you know, get a bunch of bags of uh, candy. Uh, you know, have a giveaway for kids that show up in costume. Uh, you know, so you, you create that kind of environment that it's fun and inviting. Inviting is the most important thing because, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, comic shops have kind of a connotation uh, that isn't inviting. Uh, but you can make it inviting through these events. If you are doing more than comics, like uh, we do Magic the Gathering, we have uh, three tournaments uh, every week. So Thursdays we do Commander, uh, Fridays we do uh, Friday Night Magic, we run Modern, and then again on um, Saturdays and Sundays we have a kind of open play. So we have space in the back which is just for playing games. We also encourage people that want to play board games to come. And we used to have board game nights. We've kind of morphed since, um, you know, that kind of died out during COVID of course for everybody. but. Um, it's starting to come back. We're starting to get people to come down and uh, run their D&D campaign and so on and so forth. You can also do that as events. You can have like one at each table and like have a big D&D day. There's a lot of ideas out there uh, for events. If you do sports cards, which I'm moving back into sports cards um, only because the opportunities have come, come to do that. Um, you could get, uh, if you have a minor league baseball team, you can bring in a, uh, some minor league ball players. Um, and do a signing with them. And, uh, you know, for the younger kids, that's, you know, to meet somebody that's playing pro ball, it's, you know, very exciting. But it is all geared to driving traffic into your shop, uh, making it a place that's uh, fun. Uh, you know, you wanna make memories. When people have memories, really good memories of your business, uh, they become lifelong customers. Uh, they also, when they talk to other people, they talk fondly of your place. Uh, and then it also generates free advertising. So when we had the clerks guys here or whenever they come in and you know take a picture and it shows up on our Instagram, you know, radio stations put it on their on their website and it creates a lot of buzz about your shop that costs you nothing. That's a that's a big thing because advertising is very expensive and I haven't found any that are very effective. You know, we had a little piece already on advertising and what we do uh, but uh, 
this is free advertising and you cannot beat free advertising. Make sure that when you are having an event that you spend the time to plan out where you're gonna put it. Uh, you know, Facebook, invite everybody that's on your Facebook page, get it on um, your Instagram, you know, pump it the whole week beforehand on your Instagram, like little teasers coming up to it. Even the day of, you wanna post, you know, it, you know if you're, you have a good live group that come onto your Instagram when you're doing lives, you know, do a live when you're starting out. Cause if you're gonna have an event for four or five hours, you know, get that alive on right in the beginning and again in the middle and you get people to come by before the end of the day. Um, again, <clears throat> it's all about driving that traffic, uh, getting people through the door, especially if you're not gonna be downtown. I was lucky enough to find a spot that's a downtown in the city and, of uh, Port Jervis. And so I, have, I do have some foot traffic. In the wintertime, downtown is not that um, busy. Right, it's cold, it's windy, it's all outdoors. It's not like a mall. Um, so we still need to drive traffic. So events do that. But if you're if you pick the place that's outside of town, and comic book shops and collectible shops are a destination, people will find you and people will drive out to you. Um, so if you are out of town, events are even bigger to drive traffic. So the kind of different kind of events you can have. There's a you can, you know, get into Google search and a comic shop, shop events and you'll see other events that people have run. There's a lot of people doing a lot of creative stuff out there. There's a releases they'll like, <clears throat> if you're going to go ahead and do an exclusive, maybe you can, you know, if, if you've got that kind of money, you can fly the artist out and have an exclusive signing for your exclusive book. Um, maybe if it's a, an artist that you've found, it's somebody local and you, you're doing a collaboration anyway, you can do that there. It's a, um, <clears throat> it's a great way to introduce people to the art form of comics because when they find out they can get an autograph, it turns into something different than just the, the medium of comics. The other uh, kind of events we, I, I really stress you should go out and do is uh, community events like um, uh, street fairs. You know, if you're in a county, like in up in New York, we have counties and towns and villages, but every town, most villages all have their own little street fairs. If you can take a table there, it's another way of, uh, you're paying for advertising, but it's really cheap and you can make money while you're doing it. So you bring some of your wares out to the street fair, you know, a little smattering of what you do, because you're gonna get, you know, one table. If you wanna take 10 tables, take 10 tables, but you know, in that one table, you're gonna get people coming by and they're gonna to get to know your store. You're gonna to get to have an interaction with people that may have not even known you exist. So street fairs is really a great way. And then there's a lot of people more from conventions into comic shops, but comic shops can also do conventions. Um, I'm actually doing our first because man, there's a lot of reasons why we didn't do conventions. We didn't really have the, the inventory when we first opened. Um, and then we really didn't have the manpower for a long time. And now that we kind of have the manpower and the inventory, I'm doing my first convention in November, but uh, they, they can be very profitable. But again, there's a lot of people out there that don't know you exist that already collect. Um, and conventions is a great, great place to connect with uh, collectors. And if you have a lot of stuff that they're looking for, at, at the kind of price they're looking for, you can maybe make a customer, even a long distance customer. We're all doing shipping nowadays because of, uh, you know, that's, that's the way of the business is to, you know, you gotta be online selling some books. So if you're shipping anyway, you might as well make your own customers that are coming directly to you. Conventions is a great way to do that. One of the other things, uh, events that we're having is uh, I got a local uh, artist, a guy who worked on uh, Sonic back in the 90s. Um, and he wanted to do classes for kids. Well, I have the event space for, you know, Magic the Gathering, it's tables. So we got together and so far it's been overwhelming response. Uh, looks like we're gonna maybe possibly move into two classes instead of one. Uh, but again, this is, um, it, it, we're, all the money's gonna go to the artist uh, for teaching the class. Uh, I'm gonna provide some supplies. It's very cheap advertising, right? So I go to the dollar store, I pick up some, um, artist books and some pencils and these kids are going to get a chance to learn from somebody who's been in the business 
uh, about comic book art. Um, actually, the funny thing is, is two of the people who signed up for the class also became subscribers to a Sonic comic. So, not a, so now I made a long-term customer, a subscriber, out of um, running an event. So there's a good example of, and we're going to start trying to do some more of these. We're, we might have a writing class. So I'll see if I can find somebody who has the ability, the opportunity to do that, come and do a writing class. Um, and we've actually had a lot of adults that were interested in having this class. So it looks like we'll have uh, two kids classes and maybe uh, in the future an adult class. So yeah, uh, another great event that you can run is getting the, anything that gets the community involved and engaged in, in your retail store. And it becomes more, of, more than just uh, a comic shop, right? It becomes a, 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 a beacon of the community and a place where everybody can go. And, and meet together. That's another way you can you can drive traffic is through holding classes. Oh, and here's some video examples of some of the stuff we've done in the past. From 12 to 3 today, we had Brian O'Halloran, Bill Pukowski, and Tony Maiello, who together formed Rocket Inc. Studios, and they had this comic that they put out uh, that they initially did over Kickstarter. It's called Odd Tales from the Curio Shop. And they actually had Brian O'Halloran, they had him as the curator, so his likeness. It was pretty cool that we were able to get all three of them together. Uh, we really love throwing events like this because it really brings the community together. Yeah, in case you missed it, uh, well, before we opened, we had a line of people outside waiting to, do, to get the signing done. It was very exciting for the shop and we had lots of people come through. We do events like this pretty often, so make sure you stay tuned on our social media because we always talk about it well in advance and we don't shut up about it until you show up. We're going to continue to do this. The more you support us, the more people we can bring in. So May 5th of last year was our free comic book day and uh, we had a really good time. We had Brian O'Halloran and Scott Schiaffo from Vulgar, also from Clerks. Uh, we had David Madison. Uh, the director of Mr. Hush. We had Gene St. Jean, who worked for McFarland Toys for several years and now has his own studio and is killing the game right now. Seriously, his figures are incredible. We had the Joke Knight, who asked to remain nameless, but uh, he showed up in full Batman costume and took pictures with us and was interacting with all the kids and hanging out and having a good time. And this year, I believe we are also having Batman and Catwoman appear. Uh, anybody else that you want to know who's coming, you're going to have to f go ahead and follow us on social media. And so Free Comic Book Day every year is uh, a holiday for all of us nerds to come together and hang out. And we have a bunch of comics that are free that you can take home with you. But yeah, so I mean, Free Comic Book Day is a good day for everybody. It doesn't matter if you've never read a comic before in your life or if you've been reading comics since you could first read. It's a good time to, to come down to your local comic shop and really just interact with the community and pick up some new books and interesting things. This year we had our annual free comic book day and it happened to land on May 4th, which everybody knows is Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. We had a pretty great event. We had an amazing turnout. I think we had just about as many, if not more, than last year, which was astounding. Uh, we had Sean Lewis of Image Comics, who wrote Saints, Coyotes, The Few, Betrothed, uh, and we also had Gene St. Jean returning as well, the sculptor from uh, who once worked for McFarland Toys, uh, and now he has his own studios. Uh, he also makes creature replicas, which are these incredible figures of various North American mythos creatures or mythical creatures. Um, we had Nerd Truth and Tashi.0 Geek Girl as cosplayers, cosplaying as the bat and the cat. We had Batman and Catwoman here, which was pretty amazing. We also had trivia every hour on the hour. Uh, I personally delivered the trivia, and everybody who answered a question correctly got a ticket. And the tickets we ended up giving away Mace Windu's lightsaber. So that was a really, uh, it was a really cool thing to give away and give back to the community. It was just a really great time. Everybody really enjoyed themselves. We had all sorts of events going on. We had all sorts of ways to win prizes, win tickets. And, you know, everybody enjoys coming out to meet somebody in the industry, somebody who's who's just as absorbed in the culture as they are. And not just that, but makes a career out of it. And it kind of it reinstills this, this childlike wonder, I think, that they could be the next great comic writer or they could be the next great comic artist or the next great sculptor. 
So it, it's just really cool to be a part of a team who was able to deliver that to to the sleepy town of Port Jervis and the surrounding areas. It was just a blast. And I really hope that those of you who came out enjoyed yourselves. And I, those, I hope those of you who haven't come out will come out next year. Uh, if you can think of anything that I left out, uh, if you have a suggestion for everybody on a different kind of event you can have, uh, please leave it in the comments. You know, help the community out and, uh, you know, keep reading comics. Start opening shops. Mm -hmm.